How's it going star seekers? I hope you're all having a fine day and welcome back to the channel where today I'm bringing you a review for a game called Restless Night. It's an arcade style twin stick shooter where the player has to fight the way through waves of enemies in randomly generated arenas, collecting different pickups to increase the chances of survival as they attempt to survive against increasingly dangerous odds. Adopting a visual style which looks like something from the Atari days, Restless Night is not exactly something you'd call eye candy, but how does the game play and is it worth your cash? In this review I aim to answer that question, so don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for future reviews and let's get started. So Restless Night released last month on Steam and it's due to release on the Nintendo Switch on the 16th of July where it'll be available for $4.99 on the US eShop and around about a fiver on the UK eShop. Its visual style was what originally caught my eye with this one and after playing the game I can tell you that it not only looks but also plays very similar to a retro arcade game so if you're a fan of games like Robotron 2084 then this one may be worth giving a go. Now Restless Night is a single player arcade game and it comes with two different game modes. The first of these, simply titled New Game, is kind of like the game's story mode and the intro into it, delivered by a chattering skull, explains that the strongest person will receive a second life and return to the kingdom of the living. This kind of gives the impression that there's some sort of competition going on in the land of the dead, but beyond this, there's very little else in the way of a storyline. So we get to play as this little skeleton dude and while there's no instructions given to the player on what they should be doing, the simplicity of the game really doesn't require one. The controls for the game consist of moving our character around with a left thumbstick and aiming and firing with the right thumbstick and that's it. There are no dodge manoeuvres, no reloading of weapons and no special abilities, just incredibly simple twin stick shooting which makes the game accessible to almost everyone. Now gameplay in this first mode sees you fighting your way through waves of enemies. The numbers in the bottom left corner indicate which wave you're on and the total number of waves you have to fight through and once you complete all waves, all on screen enemies are destroyed and a portal leading to the next level will appear. Every time you begin a new level its layout will be generated with the buildings, fences and enemy spawners placed in random locations and while we do get a couple of pallet swaps after beating a certain number of levels, nothing new comes in the way of arena features and I really would have liked to have seen a bit more variety with this. Now working your way through the first levels, things start off pretty easy and at quite a slow pace. Slow moving zombies will spawn from the gravestones and amble the way towards you and taking them down with your standard pistol shouldn't prove too much of an issue. But as you get further into the levels, new enemy types will begin to appear and in larger quantities and the pace of the game really begins to pick up, requiring you to play smarter and utilise the arena features to block enemy projectiles and manipulate enemy movement. Now there are also several power ups which spawn each time you kill a certain number of enemies indicated by the number in the bottom right corner. These include a couple of new weapon types, health pickups, speed boosts and shields and while the pickups do add some much needed variety to gameplay and prove invaluable especially in the later levels, I did feel that they made the game a little too easy. The duration of the shield pickup seemed overly long and coupling this with a shotgun will see you tearing through enemies fast enough to guarantee a consistent spawn of pickups in which time you can usually snag another shield and extend its duration. Now when it comes to the game's lineup of enemies the variety isn't too bad. Alongside the standard zombies and mummies you have things like witches who travel across the screen firing a stream of projectiles at you, bats which can pass through fences and buildings, giant pumpkins and clowns which flow down into the arena with balloons. But while all these enemies are visually different, I did find that the mechanics of them were all pretty similar. You basically have enemies which either make their way towards you and attack once they reach you or those which fire projectiles when you get within range of them and this lack of variety can make gameplay feel a little repetitive. Being an arcade game styled after the classics though, this is kind of to be expected and if you're considering picking up the game, I'd advise keeping this in mind. Now every 5 levels you do have boss fights to contend with but again the mechanics of these are pretty simple and while they do have multiple phases when the boss's health is reduced, the pickups which spawn still make the boss fights relatively trivial. 
So aside from the main game mode, you also have something called arena mode. In this mode, the wave counter is replaced by a timer, and it essentially sees you surviving for as long as possible against increasing numbers of enemies, and unlike the main game mode, the arena is generated upon starting arena mode and remains the same. Every 5 minutes or so, a new enemy is introduced to up the ante a little, but to be honest, I found that arena mode took way too long to actually become challenging, and once again, the pickups really trivialise the combat. So overall, Restless Night is not a bad little arcade game. Gameplay is simple and easy to pick up, which makes it accessible to audiences of all ages, and it works fine as a little time filler game to play when you've got a spare 10 minutes or so, but I don't think it offers enough to keep you captivated for long periods of time. There are no leaderboards for the game, which means there's no real incentive for repeated playthroughs, and I really think that a two-player mode with some cooperative and competitive elements would have really added a lot to the game. Now with all things considered, when it comes to my own personal rating, I'm going to be giving Restless Night 3 out of 5 stars. In all, I feel that Restless Night is one of those games which you'll play for about an hour or so, but then only pick up every so often when you don't have enough time to put into anything deeper. A fiver isn't a bad price to pay for the game, but if you're not in the market for a new time filler game, then it might be worth waiting for a sale on this one. And that about wraps up this review of Restless Night on the Nintendo Switch. Make sure to hit that like button if it helped you out, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the game in the comments section below, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel to be notified of my latest reviews and content. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves, and game on.